This video is for A-level physics, looking at the rules around uncertainties and how we use them when, in where, when we're dealing with equations and calculations. So what we're going to do for this situation is we're going to work out for this cylinder, which has a diameter of 43 centimetres and a height of 62 centimetres, uh, the values for the circumference, the area, and the uh, volume, and we're going to work out the absolute uncertainty for each of those. But we're going to use do so when we've got when we've measured these two values with two different pieces of equipment, with a ruler which has an absolute uncertainty. Uh, or a plus or minus one millimeter, that's also its resolution, or a caliper, which has a higher resolution, so not plus or minus 0 0.001 millimeters. And we're gonna look at how that affects the absolute uncertainty. Right? So, um, to start with, if I was to use the ruler and I was to write out uh, the information that I've got, I've got my diameter, which is 43 centimetres, plus or minus 0 0.1 centimetres. So this is, I've just put, kept everything in centimetres for this. Height would be 62, plus or minus 0 0.1 centimetre. And uh, as we'll see later, I also need my radius eventually. So my radius is 21.5 centimetres. Okay. Now, in order for us to be able to, um, to calculate um, our absolute uncertainties in this, we need first of all to think about some rules linked to uncertainty. So first, let's just start with this example, right? So uh, imagine I have a metal bar, which I'm hanging in a certain position. Uh, the total length of the bar is Z, and the distance from here to there is X, the distance from there to there is Y. So Z is going to be X plus Y in this, okay? Now, if I want to make up values for this, for example, so x is 3 centimetres and, and y is 6 centimetres, but I've used this ruler, which has an uncertainty if we've already established a plus or minus 0.1 centimetres, what I could do is add those together to give me my value in z, which would be 9, but my absolute uncertainty would be plus or minus 0.2 centimetres, because I could have measured this one 0.1 centimetres too big, and this one, in which case that would create plus, plus um, 0.2 centimetres. So when you have values which you either add, or you can see here as an alternative example, if I take away, and I was to do this, repeat the same process, but to obviously have uh, 9 take away 3 to give me 6, but it would still be that I'd measured that 9 to plus or minus 0.2 centimetres, so then my y would still be plus or minus 0.2 centimetres, so it works the same whether it's plus or take away, we add together their absolute uncertainties. So in any equation where we have something that is add or take away, we add the absolute uncertainties together um, if we want to know what it is for a calculated value. Now, it's more complicated if we have um, equations which are multiplied or divided. Because what we need to do in this situation is we need to calculate the percentage uncertainty. So, uh, as an example, what I would do for this situation is, and it would not matter whether it was A times B or A divided by B. If I wanted to know the percentage uncertainty in Y, I would have to calculate the percentage uncertainty in A by doing my absolute uncertainty divided by the, the value in times 100, plus the absolute uncertainty in B. So if I added my percentage uncertainties in each of these together, I would get my percentage uncertainty in Y. Now, if I do this for where I have an equation which is got a squared value in, <coughs> then what I now can do is if I want to know the percentage uncertainty in Y, I have to multiply the percentage uncertainty in A by the power. So you can see there, we've multiplied it by 2. If it was to any power... So I've got n here representing power, then n is this number here. So I'd multiply it, say if it was cubed, I'd times it by 3. So those are our rules about uncertainties that we use. So now let's use these to do some calculations. So I said before we're interested in the circumference, the area, and the volume. Okay. Uh, so I can calculate these, which I have here. Right. So the equation for circumference is pi times d, so just to show you, so pi multiplied by 43, that is 135.1, just rounded it, uh, then 
my obviously radius is 21.5, which I would need to square and multiply by pi to give me my area. And I then times that by the height of uh, 62 centimeters to give me my volume. Okay, so that's in centimeters, that's in centimeters squared, and that's in centimeters cubed. I'll come back to that in a second. Now, so I've got my equations for circumference, uh, area, and volume here. Now, I don't just want the calculated values for these, I want the absolute uncertainty. So I'm going to do this for the ruler first. So we've established what my absolute uncertainty would be for these two values if I used a ruler. Now, what I need to do is, in order for me to calculate my absolute uncertainty in C, what I first need to do is I need the percentage uncertainty. So the reason I've crossed out pi here is because pi is just a number. Pi is 3.14, doesn't have any uncertainty, so we can ignore it completely. So this equation then becomes C is equal to D effectively. Uh, and so the percentage uncertainty in C will be the same as the percentage uncertainty in D. So what we then do is we have to work out my percentage uncertainty in D. So I do my absolute uncertainty, which is 0.1, divided by 43, which you can see here, times 100, which will give me my absolute uncertainty in D, which is 0.23%. So if we do this, 0.1 divided by 43 uh, times 100, that has given me my absolute, uh, my percentage uncertainty. Now, in order to work out my absolute uncertainty, what I then need to do, since this is my percentage uncertainty, is I need to turn it back into an absolute. The way that I do that is I have to work out what 0.23% of 135.1 is. So I divide this number by 100 to turn it from a percentage into a decimal. And then I can use this number and I simply times it by the value I want to know the percentage of. So I can times it by that, and I will get plus or minus 0.31, uh, and I've run out a little bit of space, but centimetres. So I've got my value for my circumference and my absolute uncertainty now, plus or minus 0.31 centimetres. Let's now do it for the area. Now the area, if we look at the equation, is area is radius squared. So I need the percentage uncertainty in my radius. Now to be clear, when we go from the diameter to radius, I've halved my diameter in order to give me my radius. I haven't measured my radius. So you notice I haven't included the absolute uncertainty in my radius here yet. That's because if you think of this equation, diameter is equal to the radius divided by 2. Divided by 2 is just a number. It doesn't have an uncertainty. So like this situation, the percentage uncertainty in my diameter must be the same as the percentage uncertainty in my radius. So... Since we've established that the percentage uncertainty is 0.23, I'm interested in um, uh, so that's my percentage uncertainty not only in my diameter but also my radius. I want to know what 0.23% of my radius is. So I divide it by 100 to turn it from a percentage into a decimal. And I'm going to times 21.5 by that, and you'll see that my absolute uncertainty, which I'm hoping is not a surprise to you, is plus or minus 0.5. So that is halved because that number is halved. Okay, so that would be plus or minus 0.5 centimeters. So that's my absolute uncertainty in my radius, but my percentage uncertainty is the same. Okay, that's the thing that says the same. So if I want to know the percentage uncertainty in my area. I need to do the percentage uncertainty in R times 2, because according to our rules, if it's something to the power, I have to multiply it by 2. So we have, and I'm going to use these numbers here now just to prove that it's the same, 0 0.05 divided by 21.5 times 100. That gives me a percentage of 0 0.23, which is what we were expecting. And now I times that by 2 to give me my percentage uncertainty in A. So the percentage uncertainty in A is equal to 0.465%. Uh, okay. So now I want to work out my absolute uncertainty in A. So I need to turn this into a decimal, divide it by 100, and then times it by my area, 1,452.2. And I get my absolute uncertainty in my area as 6.75% centimeters squared 
Now lastly, if I look at my volume, you can see that we've got radius squared uh, and the height. Uh, at the height. So same as what we did here, my percentage uncertainty in my volume is going to be the percentage uncertainty in my radius times 2, which is the same as the previous question, plus the percentage uncertainty in my h, because if I have two things that are multiplied, so r squared and multiplied by h, as we can see here, the way we work out our calculated percentage uncertainty is we add the percentage uncertainties of the two things we're times them together. Okay, so what I need is the percentage uncertainty in H, which is 0.1 divided by 62 times 100. So my percentage uncertainty in H uh, is going to be equal to, I'm just going to write it here just for space, 0.16%. Uh, so I have to do add this percentage to the percentage uncertainty in my R. So uh, I'm just going to store that for a second. So I'm going to just rework out my percentage uncertainty in R. So 0.05. The reason I'm doing it this way um, and I'm going to put all that in brackets. So that's the percentage uncertainty in my R. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that it, my rounding doesn't affect my final answer. And I need to times that by 2, and then I need to add that to my answer. So I'm just going to um, put that all in brackets. You can never put enough brackets into a calculator. It makes sure everything works exactly the way you want. So 0.62, that sounds about right. So 0.465 plus 0.16, that's fine. So my percentage uncertainty in my volume is 0.62. Uh, 6%. And then I need to you work out my absolute uncertainty, so I turn that into a decimal, divide it by 100 times 936.5, and I get my absolute uncertainty of plus or minus 563 centimetres cubed. So you can see that even though this is a quite small percentage uncertainty, it's quite a large number of centimetres cubed uh, when you scale it up. That's quite significant. Now, the final bit of this is how is this different if I was to do it with a caliper? Because I would have a better resolution and a smaller absolute uncertainty. So, um, the circumference, the area and the volume, they are all going to be exactly the same. So my circumference is still going to be 135.1, my area is still going to be 1,452.2, and my uh, volume is still going to be 90,036.5. But my absolute uncertainties are going to be different. So I need to rework out my percentage uncertainty. So if we do the circumference, percentage uncertainty in circumference is equal to the percentage uncertainty in my diameter because pi doesn't have one. So my diameter now, if I write this out, is 43 plus or minus 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.01 centimetres. My height is 62 plus or minus 0 0.001 centimetres. And as uh, my radius, which I'll also do now, is going to be 21.5 plus or minus 0 0.00. .00 uh, 0.5 centimetres, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I then need to work out my percentage uncertainty in D. So, 0.01 um, divided by 43 times 100. So, my percentage uncertainty, you will be unsurprised to know, is just 100 times smaller than this, okay? Uh, so that's my percentage uncertainties. That's also the percentage uncertainty in my value for C. So I want to then use that by dividing it by 100 and then multiplying it by my value. And I get my absolute uncertainty now plus or minus 3.1 times 10 to the minus 3. So you can see that's much smaller in centimetres. Than that by a hundred times. So you can see my absolute uncertainty now is just a hundred times smaller because I have a piece of equipment that's a hundred times better. But let's just prove this again. So with my radius, 
we work out the percentage uncertainty. And again, you should be unsurprised to see that the radius still has the same percentage uncertainty as the diameter. I need to times that by 2 to give me that percentage uncertainty in my A. So not point again, you can see that's 100 times smaller than the value we calculated before. So that's my percentage uncertainty in my area. So to work out my absolute uncertainty, I divide it by 100 to turn it into a decimal. And then I multiply it by my area, 1,452.2. Uh, and I get plus or minus 0.0675 centimeters squared. So again, you can see that is 100 times smaller and that works. As one final example, so uh, percentage uncertainty in my height now. Is again 100 times smaller, so 0 0.0016. And I'm going to add that to my percentage uncertainty in my radius. Um, multiplied by 2 because it's radius squared and I get a value which as you can see is 100 times smaller than our percentage of uncertainty in volume in the first time and then what I can then do is um, divide that by 100 and times it by 90,036.5 and I get plus or minus 6 5.6. Uh, I'm just going to put because uh, I've round numbers, use the numbers slightly differently. I'm just going to keep that as the same just for this. So you can see again, it's a hundred times smaller than that. So that shows you all of the rules linked to uncertainty, both when we're adding quantities, times in or dividing, or we have squared or quantities to some other power. There's a lot of examples there, so you need to know how to do uh, how the absolute uncertainty is different to the percentage uncertainty, how to go from the percentage back to the absolute by turning it back into a decimal and multiplying it. Uh, if there's any step in this that doesn't make sense, go back and watch it carefully, check what I'm doing on my calculator when I show it there, and follow it through for yourself.